At this point in time, the cover officer estimated that he was 15 to 20 feet to Lieutenant Kerr's left and that Lieutenant Kerr was about 5 feet from the suspect vehicle when he fired. The cover officer said that he approached the car and fired his taser at Mr. Young to prevent him from driving away again. The taser dart struck Mr. Young. The cover officer then rear officer pulled Mr. Young out of the car. Lieutenant Kerr broadcast that there was an officer involved shooting and requested medical assistance. The cover officer ran to his car for a CPR mask but could not locate one. Lieutenant Kerr went to his car but similarly was unable to locate a CPR mask. The cover officer finally located a mask from a responding officer and he and Lieutenant Kerr began performing CPR. Paramedics had access to Mr. Young immediately upon their arrival. Mr. Young was pronounced dead at the scene. Review and Disciplinary Process Training Division reviewed that meaning analysis in this case was comprehensive and critical of Lieutenant Kerr's tactical decision-making. The review concluded that Lieutenant Kerr made decisions that were inconsistent with the meaning division's philosophies. First, the meaning analysis faulted Lieutenant Kerr for not taking advantage of time and waiting for cover to arrive, running the license plate to learn if the car was stolen, and checking the inside of the car more thoroughly. The analysis further found problems with Lieutenant Kerr not notifying dispatch or the precinct that he was responding to the call and giving limited information when requesting cover, causing the cover officer to approach from a less tactically desirable direction. The analysis noted that the two officers failed to communicate throughout the incident, the possible cause of the divergent responses to the car when it lurched away from Lieutenant Kerr. The training division review opined that Lieutenant Kerr was tunnel visioned on the car and may not have obtained a good view of the area around the car. As a result, Lieutenant Kerr seeded the opportunity to locate potential positions of cover and concealment and identify escape routes if tactical retreat became necessary. In addition, analysis noted that Lieutenant Kerr failed to identify himself as an officer when he contacted the driver of the car. The analysis concluded that Mr. Young may not have known that Lieutenant Kerr was an officer because Mr. Young was asleep or passed out when Lieutenant Kerr first contacted him. The emergency lights of Lieutenant 25 Kerr's car were not visible to Mr. Young, and Lieutenant Kerr's headlights and spotlight probably flooded Mr. Young's vehicle from the rear, potentially blinding him. The training analysis also examined the cover officer's use of the taser and concluded it was consistent with the PPP policy at the time. The policy authorized taser use to overcome physical resistance, which included attempts to flee such as Mr. Young's driving away. While the training analysis noted that a request for and provision of medical assistance was timely, it also criticized both unseen officers for a lack of familiarity with their equipment, as neither officer was able to locate a CPR mask in his car. Finally, the review recommended that the training division should continue to develop scenarios that emphasize tactical advantages, develop discussions and exercises and expose officers to an analysis of the pros and cons of shooting at moving vehicles, explore methods of conditioning officers to recognize the threat of moving vehicles and condition them to go to cover, and research trends in law enforcement about how best to deal with moving vehicles. Commander's Review Memorandum The Commander reviewed Lieutenant Kerr's actions and found that the shooting was not a violation of Bureau policy and was within the policy of PPP's directive involving shooting at moving vehicles because there were no other reasonable means available at the time to avert or eliminate the threat posed by Mr. Young's operation of the car. The Commander's conclusions were at apparent odds with the training analysis criticism of Lieutenant Kerr's tactical decision-making. Assistant Chief Memorandum Assistant Chief Lenny Burke hand wrote a subsequent notation indicating that she concurred with the commander's finding. Lieutenant Kerr's use of deadly force was within policy but controverted the commander's findings as to Lieutenant Kerr's performance and found that his actions and decisions were not consistent with PPP training. 26 Use of Force Review Board The Use of Force Review Board concluded that Lieutenant Kerr's use of deadly force was justified. The board, however, sustained unsatisfactory performance allegations relating to a number of decisions that Lieutenant Kerr made prior to the use of deadly force. The board also concluded that Lieutenant Kerr violated the Bureau's shooting at moving vehicle directive, that Lieutenant Kerr's actions were precipitating factors in the use of deadly force. Voting members of the review board recommended various levels of discipline from two weeks without pay to demotion, with the consensus being a four-week suspension. Chief of Police Rosie Sizer accepted the board's consensus recommendation and referred the case to the mayor with a recommended four-week suspension. Mayor's decision the police commissioner, a position then held by the mayor, is the final decision-maker in disciplinary matters involving PPP members. In this case, Mayor Tom Potter had been the chief of the police bureau 14 years earlier, determined that Lieutenant Kerr's performance warranted termination from the bureau. In the predisciplinary letter to Lieutenant Kerr, the mayor wrote that Kerr's decision to use deadly force was not an issue, but that he was being terminated because of his poor judgment, decision-making leading up to the decision to use deadly force. The letter of proposed termination and internal affairs materials were released to the media before either Lieutenant Kerr or the union president had seen the letter. Lieutenant Kerr and his representative met with the mayor for a due process meeting, after which the mayor issued his final decision to terminate Lieutenant Kerr on August 16, 2007. Arbitrator's decision pursuant to the current post-discipline process, the Portland Police Commanding Officers Association filed a grievance on Lieutenant Kerr's behalf, alleging that Lieutenant Kerr's termination was without just cause. When the dispute was not resolved at lower levels of the grievance procedure, the union, on behalf of Lieutenant Kerr, advanced the case to arbitration. In addition to challenging the finding that Lieutenant Kerr's decision-making and performance violated bureau policy, the union also alleged the city had violated the collective bargaining agreement, CBA, to require that discipline be handled in a way that was least likely to embarrass the commanding 27 officer but for other employees or the public. Specifically, the union alleged that Kerr's failure to notify the lieutenant of his intent to terminate prior to releasing this information to the media violated this provision of the CBA. 
During the arbitration, the union advanced a number of specific challenges to the disciplinary action, including the following. The primary reason that Lieutenant Kerr was disciplined was not his conduct but the result of his actions, namely a fatal officer of shooting. The charge of poor performance was too vague to provide useful guidance to employees. Training principles and techniques were never intended to be rules of conduct. No Portland police officer had ever been disciplined for tap leading up to a critical incident. The termination sanction violated the principles of progressive discipline. Lieutenant Kerr was placed back to work after the incident and had performed well during the 16 intervening months until he was placed on suspension. The arbitrator agreed with many of the union's arguments and found that the city failed to prove by clear and convincing evidence that it had just cause for terminating Lieutenant Kerr. The arbitrator noted that the mayor had agreed that Lieutenant Kerr's use of deadly force was justified because he reasonably believed that there was an immediate threat of death or serious physical injury. The arbitrator concluded that it was untenable for the city to fault Lieutenant Kerr for not trying to get out of the way of a vehicle that was rapidly approaching him. The arbitrator also relied on the commander's memorandum, had concluded that Lieutenant Kerr's actions did not violate PPP policy. In that document, the commander noted that the actions of the suspect often dictate the actions of the officer. The arbitrator used the commander's comment to then find, in the judgment of this arbitrator, Dennis Young wrote the script, resulted in his death. The arbitrator concluded that when Mr. Young made the choice to put the car in gear, set in force a new set of circumstances independent of any prior conduct by Lieutenant Kerr, found that Young's attempt to escape from the scene in order to avoid arrest by setting his vehicle in motion must be evaluated as a separate sequence of events. 28. Once Young coupled the decision-making of Lieutenant Kerr prior to the shooting from the shooting itself, arbitrator agreed that Lieutenant Kerr's decision-making prior to the time the car was set in motion was inconsistent with PPP policies, training, and practice.